So what do you do while you wait? What do you do while you wait? This, um, the title of this episode is actually taken from uh, a passage in the Bible, right? Or contextually anyway, not literally, uh, which says those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They would rise up like wings, uh, with wings like the eagles, they'll run and not be tired, etc. So what I want to address, which is why I, I titled it While You Wait, um, my initial idea was, is, was to title it Renew Your Strength, right? But I think While You Wait expresses what I want to teach um, a little better. And that's the concept of waiting, right? The concept of waiting. So when we think about waiting, uh, let's take an example. Uh, you, you're you supposed to meet a friend uh, tomorrow, say 4 p.m., at XYZ place. And he says, okay, I'm going to be there at 4. But in case I'm not there, you may have to wait for maybe 10, 15 minutes. So just wait for me. And um, if I'm not there by 4, then I'll definitely be there by 4.15. So you get there, you're an early bird, you get there for... 3.55 or close on 4 o'clock, and he's not there. So you wait. Now, what do you do when you're waiting? More often than not, you probably maybe read a book, right, or check your check your, um, check your your internet, you know, check your Facebook, check your WhatsApp messages, uh, check, check social media, you know, just a while away time while you wait, right? Now, because that is our normal idea uh, of waiting, if you if you transpose that idea and put it in the context of that passage that I just quoted, those who wait on the Lord who renew their strength, right? Um, you would come away with a mismatch because the weight that was expressed in that passage isn't quite what we mean. Isn't quite what we mean. So first of all, uh, you have to understand what what God was talking about when He said those who wait on the Lord right? Um, whenever God is doing something, whenever he wants to do something, or when he um, gives you a word or a vision or a dream, he doesn't expect you to be passive, right? He doesn't expect you to be passive. And in our context, in our, in our modern day context or human context, we ascribe waiting with doing uh, with being passive, you know, we're sitting there, we're just waiting for the events to happen, or we're waiting for the person to come, or we're waiting for, you know, the, the time to get to wherever it's supposed to get to, just waiting, or we're just, you know, or just generally chilling. But that's, that isn't what God meant or means. What he's saying is that when I give you a vision um, and I say you should wait on me, what you're supposed to do while waiting is actually is actually to execute from your own end because the way God looks at it is a partnership. It's not just him doing staring the supernatural pot and then when the food is ready he just he just releases it. No, he 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 wants you to be a co-participant in the work because it's a work and it's a joint work, and he says you're human, right? There are limits to what you can do. I'm supernatural. I can do everything. But I want you to be able to be involved in the process. So whatever I ask you to do, whatever vision I, I have given you, whatever I dream, whatever dream or idea I've given you, I expect you to start doing something about it, no matter how little it is. That shows me that you're getting ready for the eventual thing that is going to happen. You're not just sitting there idly. You're being prepared. Preparation builds up your character. Preparation builds up your faith. Preparation builds um, builds the qualities that you need in order to sustain whatever it is that you're going to get. That is what he means by waiting. You're going to be renew your strength while you're waiting. You're going to be building up the things that you need while you're waiting. You're going to be involved in the process while you're waiting. You're going to um, you're going to execute as much as you can while you're waiting. So no matter what it is, even if you don't want to look at it through the perspective of God, um, although you should really, <laughs> but even if you don't do that, realize that when you have a vision, when you have an idea, when you have a dream, whatever it is, you don't just, you're not just stuck at the level of ideation or visualization. After ideating, after visualizing, go ahead and do get off your behind and start to do something. You may not have all the financial resources, right, that you need, but there's something that you can do. So, for instance, let's take, a, take an example. You have a vision to build a school for the homeless, right, and it costs $40 million. 
Uh, you may not have $40 million in your account, but what you do have is the ability to start doing something. You can start sharing the idea. You can start um, thinking through curricula, right? Uh, you can start talking to people who will be likely partners. You can, stop, you can start talk, um, interviewing teachers, right? You can start looking at sites for the land where you're going to build or buildings that you can convert. You can start doing something. There's always something that you can start doing. And when you embark on the journey and you continue it, you discover that, you know, sooner, sooner, uh, sooner or later, the resources that you need, the people that you need, the things that you need will start to gravitate towards you. What has happened is that because your mind has been opened to the, um, to the actualization of that vision, right, or the expectancy of that vision, you start to attract resources in terms of financial resources, human resources. That is how it works. That is how the universe is configured. When you have an idea and you start to implement it, no matter how, what, uh, how little the step is, you start to embark on the journey and then resources that you need start getting attracted to you, start getting attracted to you. Um, and this has played out so many times in my own life personally. Uh, when I started to do stuff, I started to organize programs. I started to um, try and reach people on social media, um, organize courses and all of that. People started to gravitate towards me. Uh, I like this idea you're doing. Um, how can I get involved? How can I volunteer? How can I do this? How can I do that? Right? And, you know, that that's that's the way it is. The power of your desire plus your willingness to, to embark on a journey of execution attracts resources. So while you wait, do something. Do something.